Welcome to this version of Lot Talks. Uh, this version we're going to talk about uh, some of the features in the sale. Um, we're, we're probably a little behind. We're not going to talk about as many bulls as we typically have because we, we've lost a lot of time when it comes to weather last week. And so joining me is Craig Howard. Uh, Craig's been here 18 years in June. Uh, Jake Harms, my son-in-law, he's been here six years in April. I think that's right. Yeah. It's they all blend together. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so uh, these guys really do know the cows and they'll they'll help us as we kind of walk through uh, the features. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to do another little version of, of sleepers in another episode. But I just wanted to uh, mention that the sale is Thursday, uh, starts at one o'clock. It's broadcast on DV Auction. You ought to be thinking about maybe... Uh, getting registered if you're not, you know, like we are, we are, we register, we are registered with DV Auction for other auctions. And so if you've done it in the past, you know, you might want to just check that for the most part. Uh, and then the other thing that'd be helpful if you check your contact information on DV Auction, uh, sometimes uh, you put in an old address or a phone number. Uh, that's what's reported to us, and it, it sure be handy if that information is accurate if you plan on buying. But either way, we'll work through it. It's not a big deal. So I guess to talk about, start talking about the bulls, we're just going to lead it off with lot one. Uh, this is a bull I really like. Uh, I'll let the guys say a few words. I think probably my favorite part of the bull is, is there's nobody that comes to the ranch and sees that cow that doesn't like her. Yep. Uh, I mean, that's as... That's as good a cow as we probably got walking on the place right now. And, and that bull has done nothing but jump through every hoop we've asked him to this year. So. Yep. Easy fleshing, does a lot of things right. I mean, she is, you know, he sure wins a density score if, if you're looking at that. Um, I just really like that from the start. I mean, he's been a standout. It's not like he all of a sudden came on. He's been standout all summer long, always talked about her, talked about him. And every time you bring him in, just easy to deal with. And, yeah. <coughs> so quiet, nice nature, just like the cow. And, yeah. You know, like you said, too, the, I mean, every tour we had this summer, mm -hmm. they found that pair. Mm -hmm. Every, <laughs> everybody did. So. Yep. Yep. You, you know, I mean, one of the, one of the uh, criticisms probably is he's, he's a little moderate framed. But quite frankly, I think uh, consistently we make these cattle plenty big enough. Uh, they said the same thing about Energize, and and that bull's done us a lot of good. Uh, there's just a lot of good females on the bottom of this cow. I mean, you'll notice that we, further on down the catalog, that we flush this cow's dam, and there's a really good set of, uh, of uh, calves uh, as we get into it, but, but out of dividend, and, and so I believe they're out of dividend. But, you know, this bull just does a lot of things right. Uh, we're we're very likely to use the bull's AI. I think we will. Uh, we would probably continue to use his sire. Unfortunately, we lost his sire a year ago, so we're going to be looking for a replacement. And this bull stands out as you know he did everything. He scanned. He scanned a 152 on IMF, uh, a 104 on ribeye, and a 141 on on back fat. You know, one of the things I like about the high back fat cattle is we know they're the easier fleshing cattle. And I will, I will be the first to tell you that I think those higher back fat cattle make the best, uh, make the best female makers. So I think cows that go out and are easy fleshing will do that. So then we'll move on. I think the next bull we're going to talk about is three. Yep. Got a flash drive calf. I'll let one of you guys take the lead on this. Again, I think just, I mean, when you go to the pen. He stands out. Yep. I mean, he's, it's just another calf that just completely stands out out there in the pen. He's dark red. He's, he's, he's made right. He's got a little more style to him. Yep. He's got some style to him. He's easy going. Yep. He, he's uh, easy to handle, easy to be around. Yeah. I just like, he's got that, I mean, he's got the calving ease, but he's still got the power behind him. I mean, that's just what we're looking for and like I said the style the way it moves I just really like watching him move the pen you know on those two pages I'm just going to briefly you know there's a lot to I mean if we there's some bulls we're not going to talk about just because of the time but 
Lot two is a heck of a stock market. It goes back to the same cow line as Warhead. You know, lot four is another stock market out of the Rachel cow line that comes from Kurt Rich. Those are those are excellent prospects. Uh, you know, we're just we're 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 crunched on time, and so we're gonna we're gonna move on to what's our next bull, guys? Is it six? Is that you right? Got, you got six. You got we got six. six. Okay, so I I have six. This is this is out of the two hundred four E cow, which is the grand dam of the lot one bull. Uh, these dividends did a did a phenomenal job. Uh, you know, especially this flush, they're they're pretty consistent. You can't help but like the phenotype. Uh, they just did so many things right. They're hard marbling. They're 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 excellent growth. You know, I just I just like these cattle all the way around. And so uh, I'm gonna let those guys talk about lot seven. I have him as well, but I, I you'll probably want to hear somebody else visit. I think we talked about it, that, you know, just paycheck has put so many up front here. And you kind of have to dive through and maybe dig a little deep, find the differences that you really like. And mm -hmm. I think for me, I like seven, just he has a little more frame to him and just really good depth body to him, moves good. Mm -hmm. um, also his dam, I mean, that's another another good dam out of it. Yep, another good dam. You know, we've we've had a lot of good luck with the E116 daughters, mm -hmm. and uh, this one's no exceptions. Yep. Plus the Grand Dam. Yep. And that's where that frame came from, I think. Yep. That was a good mating. Yep. Yeah, this bull has a little, fro uh, little frost or, or a little scab on his scrotum. He did semen dust. Everything appears to be good to go, good to go on him. It's been mentioned to me by pretty much everybody that looks at him. But we, we, we fully stand behind these bulls, and we think, you know, he's going to be ready to go. So then our next kind of feature. Eleven. Eleven. Sorry, guys. That, uh, yep. yep. So there's another full brother to seven. It's Go full ahead. Full brother to seven. He's, uh, and I think we're splitting hairs on whether you like seven or you like eleven. I think they're they're very comparable. Yep. Uh, By the perinatal consistent herd. Yeah, exactly. And and uh, again, I can't say enough about two hundred four e the the dam of those. She's probably the best Spartacus cow uh, daughter we've got on the place. Um, if there's no other reason to to take a look at those calves i would say that just the cow alone is yeah well and then the primdose 509 cow b cow was no slouch either i mean it came out of the embryo transplant program <coughs> oh, excuse me but uh you know just uh you know i guess it'll show you the consistency that we can't agree uh, well i both both bulls are good i mean that's the reality of it and so uh you know, I, I, I don't think anybody should discount either bull. I think you should take a, a look and see which one fits your program and go from there. Yep. What's the next one we have, guys? I, I lost my list here. I've got 12. 12. Yep. 12. That's what I was thinking. You guys want to talk about this high-density calf a little bit? This high-density. The whole world knows about hard drive. Yep. And, uh, and so... Uh, I really like the franchise daughters in general, and this is this is a good one. Uh, I know he's probably comes with a little more birth weight, but I mean, if if, if you got a set of cows you need a bull for, he's gonna he's gonna bring some power and leave some daughters. Yeah. Behind. You know, one of my mantras always is is I really do believe the genomically enhanced EPDs. He's a point six. Uh, I know that uh, 114 birth weight will scare some people off, but the reality is, is when you look at that with genomically enhanced EPDs, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, that bull's going to probably produce calves that are in the mid, low to mid 80s, it'd be my opinion, uh, as, as an average. So I just, uh, you know, the 161G goes back to the lower cow line, which is the same cow line that produced hard drive. And forefront, right? No, forefront's yep. enchantress. Er, yeah. Yep. Yes. I, I, now I'm now I gotta flip back and see, make sure. I, again, again, we don't uh, we don't practice these. Yeah. Days. Well, we we go off the cuff, but I'm pretty sure forefront's out of that same Laura cow line. Uh, <laughs> those have been phenomenal female makers, and and to be honest, this high density is out of the. The sire is out of the 359B cow that sold last fall. So the next one I have is 18. Do you guys have anything in between there? No. 18 is a, is another paycheck. He's a bull. 
I mean, I just think that he does a lot right. Uh, I like how he moves. I like his shape. I like his boldness on his spring of rib. I just, uh, I, I, there's, you know, this, this bull does a lot of things right. And I sh sure think as a paycheck uh, is, is worth, is worth having a look at. I think it's interesting having that driven on that bottom side, just from the maternal standpoint, it's going to step him up a little bit. On yeah. That. We probably got in a position where we used hard drive so much that, that we had very less places to use driven than maybe we thought. Uh, that's often happens with a popular sire like hard drive stock market is we use a lot of them and then all of a sudden we don't have that many daughters. Spartacus is one we used a lot and, and people wonder why we don't have much Spartacus or his sons. Well, the reality is is that we got to a point where we used them so much that we couldn't, couldn't keep stacking them into pedigrees. And so we kind of switched off and you know, I, I, we're, you know, I guess my philosophy is, is we, if, you know, at some point when we switch off, we should have been able to produce many or several that were better. And I think we did. I mean, we used, I think we used five Spartacus sons just to give you, give you an idea. So, uh, you know, that's five Spartacus sons we used within our herd. So the next one you guys have. 31. 31. This is, I was thinking we were going to get to the thirties here. So this is an energized calf that comes out of a cow that was bought from the Ludvigson dispersal by Brentwood Farms. Go ahead. I just, I really like that calf. I think he, he, uh, he probably carries a tick more frame than some of the energized calves. So, I mean, if, if you're looking for an energized and you want to want a little more frame, he's, he's sure got it. He carries himself well. He's super easy to get along with. He's, uh, it's, it's just a good bull. I see every time I'm in that pen, I notice it. Gets that length to him, too. Yeah, yep, super long. long. Yep. Yep. So then 32, I think 32 is on everybody's list, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Jake. Yeah, just, I mean, you're going, we did the 116 again. We obviously no. liked that when we were breeding them. <laughs> we uh, thought that was a good mating, and it worked out good. Um, for me, I just really like, you know, in these little touch smaller frame, but I just really like just how smooth he is, um, yeah. quiet to be around, but also just look at the power behind him too. He's really he carries himself well, and yeah, and, uh, yeah, and, and uh, again, the like, probably a broken record here talking about the cow, but that's a that's a nice young cow. Yeah. And then uh, the next one I have on my list is thirty seven. Where are you guys at? Do you have one before that? No. Okay, thirty seven. I mean, I really like this thirty seven bull personally. I like I like his bold <laughs> Springer rib. I like the way he moves. I like his hip. Uh, you know, they're, they're, this one, again, is out of a female that came out of the Ludvigson dispersal. But this bull, uh, I, I'm all feel tempted to, to maybe possibly use this bull as, a, as, a, as an energized son. You know, we haven't decided exactly what we're going to use. We probably haven't laid out many breeding problems or breeding plans because of the constant blizzards we feel like we've been dealing with, but I, there's, there's a lot I like about this bull. So, and then, then the next one we have on the list is 40. I have 39. Okay. 39. I was thinking somebody had one before. Go ahead, Craig. At Brandon time, this was our favorite flush at weaning time. It's our favorite flush and he's still right up there. Yeah. I mean, that bull, that bull really hasn't disappointed, and, and I think every day I go out there, I think he gets a little better. Uh, I think that's a that's a good bull with a good pedigree that's going to go on and do some do something for somebody. Yep. So yep. I think he's I think he's he's uh, he's kind of special. Yep. And I mean, just including with that, he's got plenty of brothers up the line there, mm -hmm. and I have one of them on my sleepers list because I mean, just <laughs> yeah. again yeah. I kind of might miss him further back, but. Yeah, yep. they're just as good. Just and we'll talk good. about those sleepers in a bit, but the 44, 92, 98, 121, and 293 are all are all full brothers. Uh, you know, and then long history of flush cows. You know, 530's been flushed, obviously. 311 was flushed quite a bit. She was uh, an embryo cow. Yeah, they, she was born in embryo, and then there's, I'm probably thinking there's four or five generations of donor cows. <laughs> <laughs> in this bull's pedigree yeah. so and you know. just to add on to that the the heifers of this flush are just as good mm -hmm. i mean you, you can spot them too the forefronts have really done a great job for us when it comes to producing females and so 
I don't anticipate that changing. As you went through it, you can kind of see their female makers. Uh, lot, fifth, uh, lot 40, excuse me. One of my favorite stock markets comes with a little more birth, but he's got the gas. Uh, you know, again, we were just talking about it. It's a forefront daughter. Uh, out of uh, uh, out of the 289 Toriana D, D, you know, that's a cow we flushed. Um, just, just, I mean, I really like that bull for, for his ease of movement and, and, I just, there's, I think there's a little something special about him, myself personally. I mean, if we probably weren't so full up on stock markets uh, and and using the old bull himself, I mean, we bred stock market to a lot of cows through the past few years. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, the places to start to use him gets a little bit more limited. Anyway, that's that'll wrap up features. Um, you know, if you want to talk about a bull we didn't talk about, we'd be happy to do that. Uh, you know, uh, remember, we're available. We can talk about the bulls. Sale is Thursday. It starts at 1 o'clock. It's broadcast on DV Auction. Uh, and if there's anything we can help you with, don't be afraid to call.